everybody, it's Rachel here. It's great to have the opportunity to have this time of creative collections with you. I hope you've got your cuppa ready. As you can see, I've got mine and little Grace is sitting on my lap. The other dog is just down here. And it's they know when it's time for me to chill because it's then that she comes on my lap. Yes. So I'm going to put my cuppa down so I can have a little chat with you. And I've entitled um, today's or what I share on creative collections, just a thought, because that's what they are. I simply want to share with you some thoughts that are on my mind. And one thing I just want us to think about today is taking some time, just a moment, to do exactly what I'm doing here. Something that makes me happy. Having time, having space, having a nice cup of tea and a cuddle with my little dog. And just taking a breather. I don't know about you. I don't know if your life is busy or can be busy. But moments like this, when the house is a little bit quieter, are very precious to me. Because I love my family. I love their energy. I love their enthusiasm and love of life. And those of us those of you who know us know that my family have got energy in abundance <laughs> sometimes it's hard to keep up with them and that's why for me these times are even more precious so that i can make the most of time with them and being with them and enjoying a full family life and a busy life um happiness is a human emotion that is often spoken about society and businesses particularly try to often sell us happiness and yet more and more I realize that for me and I'm sure for many of you it's actually the simple things in life that make me happy and what I want to offer you today in this creative collection is a moment of stillness because there's so much noise that goes on in the world the TV might always be on or the radio or people talking people shouting and stillness is a part of life a part of a, a discipline of life that many people don't experience today we can watch whatever we want when we want listen to whatever we want when we want society years ago at this time of day in a lovely sunny afternoon within a home probably the loudest noise in some of these bigger houses would have been the ticking of a clock obviously you've got the family noises but you wouldn't have had the entertainment and I actually think that silence is a very powerful thing. You know, there's that famous song, isn't there? The Sound of Silence. It's quite a depressive song. And silence for me, where I've come from, it took a long time for me to see that there was power in silence. There was power not just in silence, but in stillness. You see, I used to run away from stillness. I'm sure um, my family that I was growing up with would testify to that. I wasn't still very long. But the older that I'm getting, I value that actually I appreciate calmer moments, stiller moments. Moments where I can have a little cuddle with this little one or just sit down and watch my children get rid of their energy. And so today what I want to offer you is just a moment or two to take a deep breath and to just still yourself. There's so much in the world at the moment about meditation, mindfulness. Even in schools, children are being taught how to still themselves, how to just calm down, particularly with life at the moment. It's been and it is a, a rather um, anxious time with this pandemic 
and many people have been affected negatively by it. Some have even lost loved ones. But life has changed. Life has changed and it's changed for all of us. And the discipline of meditation is actually spoken about in the Bible. It's a very different concept to one which we often think it is. Today when people teach meditation, what they teach is an emptying of the mind. If they teach mindfulness, it's taking us on a fantasy journey and thinking about different places, different destinations. But when the Bible talks about meditation, it talks about focusing on the word of God, focusing on who we believe is the creator of all things, who we believe is our heavenly father. And the Bible is his letters or are his letters to us so that we know more about who he is. Many of you might have been brought up with Old Testament stories of his wrath and of his anger. And God is righteous and he is just. But he is a loving, heavenly father. And because of the death and sacrifice of his son Jesus, we can now come boldly before him if we believe in Jesus. Because there's nothing that will stand in the way. He's, um, I don't know if any of you have watched Evan Almighty, it's a very, very funny film. And I think, it, I think it's in that film it talks as, smite us, oh mighty smiter. <laughs> but because now we live in the time of grace, then that grace, that love is available to all of us. And the heart of the Father is that none should perish. And meditation for us as believers in Jesus is about focusing, is about thinking on his word and on his promises. And for me, when I take a moment like this, and the house is quieter, it's so important to bring the Lord in. Because these are times, these are moments that refresh me, that refresh my soul that build me up, that bring contentment to my life, that bring completeness to my life, that bring elements of happiness to my life. And that's what I want to bring to you today. So I want us to take a few minutes to read from a psalm. Now, many of you will have heard the book of Psalms, uh, in our other series of videos, our life hacks, um, one of our dear friends, Irene, is taking us through meditating through art on Psalm 23. And they've been fascinating and fantastic. And again, it's the act of doing something to focus on something that will just bring peace. And today I want to try to bring that element of peace to you by reading. It's as simple as that. So, wherever you are, take your cuppa. If you've got something to cuddle, cuddle it. Put your feet up. And let's just listen to what Psalm 42 says. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And this psalm expresses the emptiness that sometimes we feel in life because life is difficult, because life can be hard, and because it is only the law that keeps us in perfect peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. I long to drink of you, O God, drinking deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence. My longings overwhelm me for more of you. My soul thirsts, pants and longs for the living God. I want to come and see the face of God. 
Day and night my tears keep falling and my heart keeps crying for help while my enemies mock me over and over saying, where is this God of yours? Why doesn't he help you? So I speak over my heartbroken soul. Take courage. Remember when you used to be right out front leading the procession of praise when the great crowd of worshippers gathered to go into the presence of the Lord? You shouted with joy as the sound of the passionate celebration filled the air and the joyous multitude of lovers honoured the festival of the Lord. So then, my soul, why would you be depressed? Why would you sink into despair? Just keep hoping and waiting on the Lord your Saviour. For no matter what, I will still sing with praise, for living before his face is my saving grace. Here I am, depressed and count downcast, yet I will still remember you as I ponder the place where your glory streams down from the mighty mountain tops, lofty and majestic, the mountains of your awesome presence. My deep need calls out to the deep kindness of your love. Your waterfall of weeping sent waves of sorrow over my soul, carrying me away, cascading over me like a, like a thundering cataract. Yet all day long, God's Promises of love pour over me. Through the night I sing his songs. For my prayer to God has become my life. I will say to God, you are my mountain of strength. How could you forget me? Why must I suffer this vile oppression of my enemies, these heartless tormentors who are out to kill me? Their wounding words pierce my heart over and over while they say, where is this God of yours? So I say to my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed. For I know my God will break through for me. Then I'll have plenty of reasons to praise him all over again. Yes, living before his face is my saving grace. it's mentioned twice it's mentioned in verse 5 and verse 11 in this psalm psalm 42 living before his face is my saving grace and i don't know what you're facing today but it would be wonderful for you to be able to grasp that promise to say that promise living before his face is my saving grace I have experienced it in my life, in the depth of despair and depression. But now I can testify that living before his face is my saving grace. And I hope and I pray that it will be yours too. So today, I want you to be honest with God about how you're feeling. I mean, this psalm, what I've just read is pretty honest stuff. It doesn't hold back about how he's feeling. Day and night, my tears fall before you. Why is this happening? This people saying to him, oh, where is your God? Living before his face is my saving grace. Whatever you're facing today, I want you to take a moment to be honest with him and to just acknowledge that he is there 
to breathe deeply and to realize the truth that living before the face of almighty God, creator, king of kings, lord of lords, healer, sustainer, lover and friend can be your saving grace too. So thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing this time with me. So as I leave you now, I leave you with that promise that you too can live before his face and that wonderful privilege, let it also be your saving grace. Bless you. Until next time. Bye for now.